Good morning, Bethany. Good morning. Let's stand and sing our opening carol, Angels We Have Heard on High. that wrote O Little Town of Bethlehem, Philip Brooks, he was really an outstanding preacher of the past century. And in 1968, he took a trip to the Holy Land. And after returning, he was so moved, he wanted to write a special Christmas carol for children especially. And that's where these words come from. And if you notice, we're adding a fourth verse, which we've never sung before, but he especially, it's not included in all hymn books, but it's still beautiful, especially written for children, all of us children. O Little Town of Bethlehem.
let's continue to praise as we sing this wonderful chorus, Adore. The Lord worship Christ. God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord my soul. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as the bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and the bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. That from Isaiah chapter 6, 1 to 3 and 10 to 11. We want everything to look nice, the decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us and bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it's a tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a godlin instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light these candles as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of the season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. Let's stand together and we'll sing the third verse of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
Well, it's good to see you here this morning, Bethany. So glad that you've uh, joined us. And those who uh, may be visiting this morning, a special word of welcome to you, whether you're here in person or you're here online. Uh, we, have so, we are so glad that you've chosen to join us this third Sunday of Advent. Uh, if you're here in person for the first time, there's a gift out in the uh, comments at the Welcome Center for you. We hope you'll stop by there and speak to one of the ladies, and they will get that uh, for you. And uh, it's our pleasure to have you here. If you are joining us online, perhaps uh, for the first time. Uh, would you just leave a comment, let us know uh, who you are, where you're watching from perhaps, and just include the word new. If you're a regular watcher online, uh, please feel free to just leave a note and just let us know. Hey, uh, I'm here this morning, so glad uh, to be worshiping along with you. A couple of other items available for you. Uh, you'll notice uh, th through the live stream and also through our Friday email, uh, our bulletin, our program is available and gives you the information that you need to worship along with us. Um, this Tuesday evening, again, prayer meeting uh, by Zoom or uh, in Fellowship Hall, so we hope that uh, you'll join us for that. Uh, other information with regard to Bible studies during the week is available for you, and so I uh, hope that you'll involve yourselves in the things that are going on. I uh, want to uh, share just a quick thank you that we received this week. A number of you um, gave towards the uh, Templeton Food Pantry, the non-perishable, uh, the collection for uh, the Thanksgiving baskets that they prepared, and this note came from, uh, from Michelle Cody. Um, uh, New Hope uh, Church in Templeton uh, has been organizing the food pantry there, and we're happy to come alongside them as we can. You can participate uh, in food distribution during the week by contacting Michelle, and uh, we hope that you'll do that as time permits. But she writes, thank you so much for hosting a food drive last month for the Templeton Food Pantry. Uh, we were able to distribute 47 Thanksgiving baskets to families in need in our community. We were also to pr able to pray and to share the love of Jesus' birth with men. Blessings, Michelle Cody. So thank you so much for your help in making that possible and uh, ministering alongside our brothers there in, and sisters in Templeton. Uh, I want you to uh, be aware of this afternoon, 4 o'clock, uh, the Bethany COVID Quintet uh, will be presenting carols and traditional music of the season. Uh, you can be here in person. Please, we ask that you RSVP using the app, or you can watch online. It'll be streamed on Facebook, and so you can join us in that way. That's 4 o'clock today. Um, if you are participating in the Waterford Street School Christmas Project, uh, our wrappers are ready, our shoppers are working, and gifts are beginning to arrive. Uh, the last component that we're asking that you help with is uh, if you would traditionally have taken a tag off the tree and purchase a gift, we're just asking that you give a donation towards the purchasing of those gifts. We're just trying to cut down on people being out and about during the season and trying to make that a little bit easier for everyone. And uh, your generosity in that way um, just is a blessing to these families. Presents that we wrap and give remind us of the present uh, the real present, and that is Jesus and his presence among us. And so, uh, so just a, a thank you to those who have given already, and uh, let me encourage you to do that also. Uh, candlelight service scheduled for December the 24th, that's 5.30. Um, uh, that is traditionally a high attendance service, and so we are strongly encouraging you to RSVP and reserve a seat for the service. If it should be that we overrun one service, uh, again, we can do viewing downstairs, but that's not the same as actually being here. And so if we need to, we will add a second service, uh, and we will find a way to make that work. But uh, let me encourage you to RSVP for that service uh, again. Uh, that is December the 24th at 5.30. Uh, the Christmas Fellowship Lunch, that's the 20th. Forms are available at the Welcome Center. A number of you have signed up for that, and, uh, and that is awesome. Also want to make mention of something that is in the program this morning and was in the Friday email, and that is some of the work that our CE people have been doing with regard to getting children's programming back up and running. And so for the 12 days leading up to Christmas beginning tomorrow, so Monday the 14th to Christmas Day, uh, uh, families, uh, particularly families with children, are going to be receiving an email with a family activity for them to do, kind of a 12 days of Christmas family moment for them. Um, and so, uh, so be looking for that. Our CE people are, are coming up, trying to come up with ideas as to how to uh, connect with families and, and children during this time. And so, uh, so be using that. Give us some feedback. Uh, maybe you're an old kid 
and you want to be a part of that, uh, let me know. I can add you to that, to that mailing list. Um, but uh, be aware of that, those of you who may be watching uh, or those of you who uh, get the Friday email, uh, just, uh, just let us know about that and give us some feedback. Um, want you to, uh, to be aware of the flowers today. The flowers on the uh, piano uh, today are in loving memory of uh, Thesden Laverne Westbury. Those are the yellow roses and Helen Westbury. Uh, that's the Christmas arrangement um, uh, by Joe and uh, their daughter-in-law, um, uh, Patricia Westbury. Uh, Heavenly Christmas uh, from your son and daughter-in-law. Thank you so much. Uh, as I close up the announcements for your faithful giving each week, and it just helps us to stay current, um, particularly as we come towards the end of the year. Um, we just uh, thank you for uh, for the care and uh, and your good stewardship of resources, even as we work to be good stewards uh, of all that God has entrusted to us. You can give uh, by mailing uh, through EFT uh, to the church uh, or through uh, the giving uh, opportunity out in the uh, the commons. Well, this uh, is our second Sunday of the month, and so we tend, uh, we've made it our habit to focus on our missionary of the month. Uh, uh, and so I'm gonna invite Bob uh, Perrier to come up, and uh, he's gonna share a little bit with regard to our, uh, our missionary focus of this month. Bob, if you would. Yeah, our uh, adopted um, people, uh, unreached people group of um, the world is the Zaza in Southeast Turkey. And um, we've been involved almost seven years, maybe it's seven years um, together, altogether. We've been involved with um, a ministry to the Zaza in Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Turkey. And um, this has actually been the best year of, of the seven years for what we've seen for progress. Uh, seven years ago, I think there were like 10 believers and now we're up to 150. So, uh, even in the pandemic, great things have happened this year. Uh, we don't actually know why, but <laughs> we've been praying like crazy. So I think prayer makes a big difference. So we're going to show a video, and then I'll just go over some of the progress. So if we can have the video up there. My name is El A. Shah, and I am Zaza. I used to be a Muslim, but today I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Please join me in praying for the Zaza people to come to know Jesus as their Savior and Lord. O oh Lord, you are our God. You are our Savior. You are the one who holds our hands. You are our Lord. I thank you for your salvation. I thank you that you loved us as people. Because of your love, you have saved us. While we were still sinners, you loved us. With your love, you have given us eternal life. You desire that all should be saved. And for this reason, you have sent Jesus Christ. You have placed the punishment that we deserved on him. He has taken our place. In this way, you have given us eternal life. Our God, there are so many peoples who do not know you on earth. They have no idea of your salvation. They do not know that you are the real God. They don't know that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. One of these peoples is my people, the Zaza people. They also have no idea of your love. The Zaza people don't know that eternal salvation is found in Jesus Christ. They don't know that Jesus Christ is the only way. I come before you now, Lord. I bow before you from the heart, and I request from you, save the Zaza people. Just as you have shown mercy to me, show mercy to them. Just as you caused me to search in my heart, give my people the same desire to search. We know that they are in deep blindness. They are in the dark. I was also far from your mercy in the same blindness, in darkness. But you have been my helper. 
you extended your hand to me. You took hold of me and saved me. Oh Lord Jesus, save my Zaza people from this deep blindness. Illuminate them with your holy light. Open the eyes of my people. Be their helper. Be their leader and guide. May they know that you are God. You are our master. To whom else shall we go? Where shall we go, O oh Lord Jesus? We are coming before you. We are crying out to you, O oh God. We desire all of this from you. In the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, that's a great video. The, I met the couple on Zoom. I met the couple who put that video together, and they got kicked out of Turkey. So it's a tough place <laughs> to work, if you're, especially if you're a Westerner now. The Turkish government is really cracking down on uh, West, Western missionaries being there. So um, this is a, an update. This is a, a guy that uh, we met uh, in a small town in, uh, in Turkey. He's an interesting guy. Um, but, We've talked about him before. He was in jail for two years. He, he runs a newspaper. That's newspaper clippings behind him. He's proud of his newspaper, but he was in jail for two years. He's not a Christian. He's a Muslim, but he was complaining that the local schools didn't have plumbing, so they put him in jail. So that's the kind of atmosphere that's in that country. All right, next one. So there's Turkey. It's um, kind of in the eastern part of Europe. It's considered to be in Europe and in Asia partly because of that little bridge that you see that goes towards uh, Europe. And this is a kind of a bird's eye view of the country, and you can see where the Zaza are. It's um, right there, that, where the graphic has come down. That's the territory that they're in. It's really mountainous. It's, it's, it's really beautiful. It's a beautiful place. The Tigris and the Euphrates River goes right through there. So I don't know if there's some kind of biblical uh, uh, issue, you know, like, you know, where God really loves this area. Uh, the Apostle Paul came from this area. Um, right down south of there is where the Apostle Paul came from. So in 2020, the Zaza are still an unreached people group. It's kind of a technical categorization. They got a long way before we'd be considering them uh, reached, even though there are some missionaries there and there are some, there's some progress. There's three million or more Zaza in that, ter in that territory and elsewhere in the world. And now we, we can see two small, some missionaries are saying that it's not a church yet because they don't have any real local leadership that seems to know what they're doing. They still rely on the missionaries for leadership. But there's two small assemblies in the city of Tunjali, and there's signs that leadership is emerging because they're fighting about things. <laughs> so somebody's going to emerge as a leader. So we just pray that it's, it's good leadership. And there's a small church in Eliza also. These are fairly big cities that have these little tiny churches. So there are churches now, and um, there's approximately 150 Zaza believers now. There's been a lot of baptisms this past year, a lot of baptisms, and to get baptized there is really a bold move. And there's a translation of the Gospel of Luke that's going on in Zazaki, which is the language. And there's actually three translations going on. I just learned in the last month, there's three translations of the Gospel of Luke going on because there's different dialects of Zazaki. So uh, translators are really working hard to get um, a New Testament produced in, in the language and, and in the different dialects. And there's a daily Facebook and Instagram Zaza Bible verse. Every single day, the couple that came here in September last year um, they produce every single day a, uh, an Instagram and a Facebook daily Bible verse. And there's a picture of uh, Psalm, yeah, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24. That's in Zazaki. So uh, the guy that was here, I can't actually mention his name because we're online, and they're worried about the Turkish security actually peeking in on what we're doing now. So we don't mention their names. 
but the, the couple that was here is working on that every single day. They produce these beautiful um, Bible verses that, that's getting a lot, quite a bit of uh, clicks and, and people asking questions and contacting them. So it's a really good uh, measure of progress. And I know you can't see that, <laughs> but it's a worksheet for the Bible Translation Project. And what they do is on, on one side is the Greek, down below is Turkish, and then in the middle is where they're working on the Zaza. It's, it's pretty impressive just to look at the worksheet and the little notes that are there that this word can mean this in this dialect. And so they, they're trying, this is a translation that they're calling the standard translation where they're hoping that everybody that can speak Zaza would be able to understand this translation. So the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So when, when you think about that verse, God is saying, or Jesus said, it's not the problem of the harvest. The people are there, they're seeking, they're looking, but there's not too many Christian workers. So our job here at Bethany, I don't think any of us are gonna go there. Uh, I just went there for a couple of weeks and I wanted to come home. <laughs> but God knows who the workers are that can go there, so he's asking us to ask the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field. And, Pastor, <laughs> Oh, oh, back, back some more. Yeah, there's eight Southern Baptist American missionaries that have been there for a few years. They can speak Turkish. None of them can speak Zaza. And there's four more coming. So that's 12. It's kind of a special number in God's um, economy about workers, but there's gonna be 12 total Western, all-American, um, Southern Baptist missionaries. Uh, these aren't them, because <laughs> they don't want their pictures shown. These are two uh, big Southern Baptist uh, bigwigs, uh, David Platt and J.D. Greer. But, so th there's gonna be 12, but they're kind of like contract workers. They get there, and they don't know the language. The four that are coming don't know how to speak, don't even know how to speak Turkish. So these are like temp workers. What we really need is got guys like this. His name is Ilhami. Anytime I was around this guy, he was on the phone with somebody talking about Jesus or he was, had his arm around a guy in a pizza shop or um, uh, some, some other uh, bakery or something, he's talking about Jesus. So this guy is a Zaza and he's, uh, he's a born evangelist. We need people like this. So pray for what we know as indigenous Christian workers. And the two that were here, won't say their names, but the two that were here with their kids, they're really great workers too. So, and there's a few others also. So we need more of these type of workers, the, the actual Zaza speaking believers. So, yeah, and uh, what I've noticed about this ministry, I mentioned it to somebody this morning, uh, I've never seen people pray more fervently, more strategically, and more often with discipline than, than the Zaza outreach people. These are Americans, Valerie Bowman and David Meeks, especially Valerie. She's like a bulldog for prayer. And like you get involved with the prayer time and you start talking small talk and she cuts you off and says, okay, this is the prayer list. We're gonna pray now. We're not gonna talk about the weather there in Massachusetts. We're gonna pray. So um, they're really consistent with prayer. And I've seen what happens when you pray like that. So prayer, this is their motto or their secret. Prayer is not one of our strategy. Prayer is our only strategy. And I've seen what happens when that's your strategy. So pray for the Zaza. You may recognize those two. Good morning. Uh, it's good to see you all this morning. Um, in addition, so we, when we started praying for the Zaza, there was nobody out there. It was, it was people from the outside trying to penetrate the Zaza people. And we've been praying, and now that, that to have over 150 believers is huge. It's, it's, it's just a sign of God's mercy. So please continue to pray for them. Um, I'd also encourage you to look on, on the web. Uh, Voice of the Martyrs and Voice of the Martyrs has said that there's a huge revival going on in in Iran of all places. Um, there's an underground church and 
there's people evangelizing um, and the Christian population in Iran is exploding. Um, so please pray for the people of Iran as uh, they're, they're um, oppressed and Christians are routinely in, uh, imprisoned. So please pray for um, God's mercy in Iran. Um, we're evangelicals. We're called to be on our knees in prayer. Um, I encourage you again, don't live in fear. God is on the throne. He knows what's going to happen. But he wants us on our knees to pray. He wants to commune with us. He wants to hear us. But God has it under control. Do not live in fear. Um, Judy Durkee, um, her heart is her heart stent is clear, and they're looking into respiratory issues, so please pray for her. Uh, Wendy Sandin um, is having trouble walking and is going for physical therapy, so please pray for, for, uh, for her as well. Anthony Heimela tested positive for the COVID. Um, all the Heimelas are quarantining right now, so please keep them in your prayers. Uh, and it, please pray for the Ledoux family. Dick passed away this morning. Um, so please pray for Janice and Sue Warner. Um, they've just been, you know, they're, they're part of the old guard here at Bethany. Um, and, and we need to pray for that family. In addition, um, pray for everybody um, that has physical issues as part of Bethany. Pray for all of our senior saints. We, I was just look, going over the list of uh, members. We have a lot of shut-ins. Um, we have a lot of people out. Um, we have Anna Juliana down in Florida. Uh, so we just we have a lot of people here um, that have special needs. Um, the people that are watching online uh, can't come for various reasons. But even if we didn't have to worry about COVID, we do have a lot of shut-ins among our congregation. So please keep them in your prayers. Um, and finally, pray for revival. Pray for revival nationally. Pray for revival locally. Pray for revival here in this church. Pray for revival. We need to beg God for revival. Um, we always like to think of America being that beacon on a hill. Uh, but, you know, read Romans 1. We need revival in this country. We really need revival. Um, and it starts with you all. It starts with you all reaching out to your neighbors. It starts for you all living what we read in Scripture every single day. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful to be here, to be able to worship and to be able to commune with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, we, we're grateful that you've blessed us with a good facility. We're grateful that you've blessed us as a, as a means to um, come together and um, be a blessing to our neighbors. Lord, we're grateful for the opportunity um, to be a blessing to the Waterford Street School. And we ask, Lord, that you continue to open doors um, among the, the students and parents at Waterford Street, but also continue to open doors here in Gardner as well, Lord. We're grateful for the opportunity uh, to be able to be of service um, to a food pantry in Templeton, Lord, and we praise you for that. We praise you for um, working in the lives of our families, Lord. We praise you for blessings large and small. Father, help us to be grateful and not take for granted that we live in a nation where we're st still able to worship freely. Uh, we have our needs met. We have roofs over our heads, food on the table. We're able to wear warm clothing, things that we just don't think about uh, that people around the world, especially persecuted Christians, um, they don't take those things for granted, Lord. So please help us to be grateful. Lord, help us to be cheerful givers uh, when the call goes out. Help us to give... Um, cheerfully out of our abundance and help us not to begrudge uh, when we're asked. Lord, we ask that you uh, please heal the physical needs of the members of our congregation and their extended family. We lift up Judy Durkee, who's been a faithful men member of the Bethany family. Lord, we ask that you please continue uh, to work in her life. We lift up Wendy Sandin and the Dunn family, Lord. We ask that you uh, Please continue to, to work in their lives and, and extend your healing grace to her. We ask that you be with the Heimelas. Lord, uh, we're grateful that, uh, that, and, uh, that um, Anthony was diagnosed. And Lord, we just now that we just ask that uh, his symptoms uh, just kind of go away. And, and we ask that you uh, spiritually sustain the Heimela family as they're in quarantine. Lord, we lift up the Ledoux's. 
Father, we, we are grateful that you have seen fit to take our brother, your son, Dick, home. Uh, we lift up Janice and Sue. Lord, we ask that you please be with them, uh, please strengthen them, and comfort them with the presence of your Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask that you be with all of the senior saints here in our church. Um, we're grateful that uh, we still are able to reach back in our, in our history. Uh, we lift up um, Fran and Paula Dontremont, um, who are still um, doing well. And, and as, uh, we lift up Anna Juliana down in Florida. Lord, uh, we just ask that you please continue to uh, work in their lives and, and keep them safe. Father, we're grateful uh, for the opportunity to be able to pray for an unreached people group. Help us, Lord, to continue praying effectively and as strategically, as, as uh, Bob said, for the Zaza people. Um, we see that you're working, just doing a mighty work there, Lord. Um, we ask that uh, you raise up evangelists from among them. We ask that you please make the missionaries that are over there effective, and we pray over the translation of the Bible, Lord. Father, we pray for persecuted Christians all over the world. We uh, pray for the martyrs. We're grateful that you're using them and their suffering as a means of your grace to show that you do have mercy and you are on the throne. And we pray for the persecutors. Lord, we ask that you please work in their hearts and turn them from their unbelief and their heathenism. Lord, we lift up our nation. Father, we beg you to spark a revival here in the United States. We beg that you use us as a means of that revival. Help us, Lord, to be a means of grace to our community. Help us, Lord, to be a blessing to our neighbors. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Alan and Carol, for leading us in the Advent candle this morning. Bob, thank you for that report with regard to the Zaza and the things that, uh, that God is doing there. Uh, we, get a, we get a report pretty regularly on Tuesdays in prayer meeting from Bob with regard to uh, particularly the Zaza and all of our other missionaries. And it has been in incredible just in my two plus years uh, here to see the things that God has done in and among that people. Um, and so continue to pray in that direction and for God's work there. Uh, and then thank you also, Al, for leading us in prayer this morning and reminding us uh, to pray uh, for revival and to pray for God's continued work in our hearts and in our lives. Well, let me invite you to take out your message guide, if you would. It was included in the information you received this morning, whether you were here or online. And uh, we're going to look at the Word this morning and continue in our Advent series uh, here for 2020. You know, whenever the Christmas story is shared, whenever we talk about the Christmas story and the things that are a part of it, uh, it's always, it always includes that aspect of God redeeming and using ordinary people to accomplish extraordinary ordinary things, that God is using ordinary people to bring about his kingdom uh, activities and purposes and, 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 and the things that he desires to see happen. And this is certainly the case uh, through Mary, uh, who we will look at this morning. Um, uh, she was an unwed mother. Um, uh, she didn't, uh, she, she wasn't married. Um, uh, when uh, she was with child with Jesus. Uh, ultimately, she did marry Joseph, we know. Um, and uh, in some sense, you might even say in today's parlance, uh, that, uh, that Mary uh, kind of and Joseph had a blended family. That, uh, you know, he was the father to a son that was not his own. And so that's, uh, you know, she was a single mom. Uh, in, in, in many ways. And so, uh, so we have Mary and we have Joseph here. We have this, this place where God is using these ordinary people. Uh, Joseph kind of disappears uh, following um, uh, the gospel narrative there when Jesus turns 12 and we see him uh, uh, in the temple and interacting. Uh, after that, we, we know very little uh, of what happened to Joseph. Some people believe that he passed away um, as, a, as a younger man. Um, 
the mortality rate at, uh, at uh, that time uh, for, uh, for young men was high. And so, uh, so we, uh, we know that he was not around uh, for most of Jesus' life, it appears, and certainly was not at the cross because Jesus, uh, if you would, gives responsibility for caring for his mom. Jesus gives that responsibility to the Apostle John and says, uh, behold your mother. And, uh, and, and gives her uh, to him to be uh, cared for. So here's a single mom, uh, if you would, uh, who gave herself uh, for her son uh, that he might be born and to care for him. And you here have a son also who ultimately would give his life for his mom. And it's interesting to unpack that, and we'll look at that this morning. And um, hopefully we'll appreciate that on a number of different levels, uh, particularly if you have uh, a, a blended home, if you have a single-parent home. Uh, there's, there's a lot here to connect into. Um, in the story of Christmas, particularly the story, if you would, of Mary and Joseph. So today we're going to continue that walk. We're going to continue our look uh, at Luke chapter 1, and uh, we're going to hit our third idea. Um, our first week when we were together, it, the idea was, you know, at the right time, at the proper time, at the proper moment. Uh, we see God put all of the pieces when they came together and he, and he moved out uh, in redemption. Last week when we were together, we uh, looked at the idea of having favor with God. That faithfulness is, is really that key component of favor with God. God can use you when you're faithful. God blesses us when we are faithful. Favor with God. This morning, let me encourage you to take a look, and we're going to be uh, looking at the big idea, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And so, uh, so let's... Uh, begin to look at that this morning. You know, there, there really are kind of two, there really are two kinds of people. Uh, there's the kind of people you want to be with. You know some of those people? It's like you can't wait to be with them. They're always fun. They're, you like them, you know, and it's like, gosh, I'm, they're, they're just great to hang out with. Um, you know, the kind of people you want to be with in that uh, it, they just bring joy to your heart. Uh, you know, and they just, they just light up the room and they light you up. They, you just feel great when you're in their presence. And then there's some of those people, if you would, on the other side of that coin, there are just some people, let's just be honest, they're just kind of hard to be with. They're the kind of people you, you're like, you're looking for an excuse. You're hoping the phone will ring. Uh, you're hoping somebody will knock on the door. Uh, you're, you're, just, uh, you're just looking for, for some kind of way out trap door or whatever to, uh, you know, to, to, to get away. It makes me think of that, uh, that movie. It came out a number of years ago. Go, what about Bob? Do you remember? Do you know that movie? What about Bob? And uh, just that whole idea of that family, you know, he, Bob just follows this family all over the place. You know, the father of the family, I think, is his psychiatrist or his psychologist, his counselor. And Bob just joins the family and, and the family just embraces him and loves him. And they, they think Bob's the best. But the guy who's the, the doctor, he's like... Oh, how can I get rid of Bob? I can't get rid of Bob. There's no, nothing can, nothing, I just can't. And so what I want us to see this morning has to do with the presence of people with us. The presence of people with us. There are some people we love to be with. There are some people not so much. But what I want us to see this morning is this. And it's that God's presence changes our present God's presence, his, his, his presence with us and among us changes our present. It changes our present. So let's pray and ask God to uh, just bless the moments that we have together to look at his word. Father, we are, um, we are thankful for the day that you've given us. I thank you for each one in this room. I thank you for each one that's joining us online and... Um, we know, God, that you desire to, to speak to us this morning, and so I pray you'd give us ears to hear, and that you would help us, God, to, to apply the things that, that you show us. Um, I pray today, uh, as we continue to think about Advent, Lord, that uh, you would take us from simply 
uh, recognizing that you work all things together at just the right time uh, and that you help us to step into uh, acknowledging the need for faithfulness and Lord, our, our commitment to you uh, and in so doing, God, we find favor and blessing in that. Today, help us to recognize, God, that, um, that you are with us um, and that that was good news of great joy uh, then and that it is good news of great joy now that you are with us. So speak to us today, I pray, um, about the wonderful present of your presence among us and with us. And we'll thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. So Luke chapter 1, let's pick it up in verse 1, and uh, in chapter 1 again, in verse 26. And uh, it starts out here, it says, Now in the sixth month the angel Gabriel sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. Now, one of the things that I want us to notice here, and again, we're focusing on Mary this morning and just uh, gleaning things from the scriptures, uh, these Christmas scriptures with regard to her. The first is this, and that is, is that Mary was pure. Mary was pure. Notice if you would, Mary, Mary, Mary is, is, is a pure young lady. Now, the word that's used here to describe her is the word Alma. Alma is, have you ever known anyone named Alma? That's an old name. You don't meet many Almas anymore, but Alma is actually a Hebrew word, and it literally means young woman. And here, by the way it's used, it implies that, that Mary, Alma, that she is a virgin, that she has not been a man. It speaks to her, been to, with a man, it speaks to her purity. The same word is used with regard to a number of other people we see in Scripture. It's used with regard to Rebecca in Genesis 24. It's also used about Miriam, Moses' sister in Exodus chapter 2. Uh, it's used to speak of pure character in Psalm 68. And so here we have a woman who is pure. She, is, she, she has a measure of righteousness, of holiness about her life. Um, and, and so she is... She is um, uh, she is a very special individual when it comes to God's purposes here. Uh, we know that she's espoused to Joseph, and she's in the midst of this super serious engagement period, this betrothal period, where they are, they are testing, if you would, her purity to make sure she isn't with child from someone else. And it kind of creates its own unique situations in here. But the issue of her purity and uh, the issue of how God is going to bring about this child has some unique theological considerations, some unique theological issues, um, and... and and those are all wound up here, and we're not going to take time to, uh, to navigate all of those, except to say that, that Mary is, is unique in terms of who she is and is able to accomplish God's purposes because of her purity. The second thing I want us to pick up is as we walk through here from verse 26 and 27, verse 28. Having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women." Blessed are you among women. The second thing we see is that Mary pleased to God. Not only is she pure, but she is someone who pleases him. Um, now, parenthetically, last week, again, kind of flipping back, we saw that, that she had found favor with God. And we unpacked that, that concept a little bit. She had favor with God. She was highly favored. And so as we think here, it's, it is, it's really kind of a statement of history, a, a, a description of her present reality, that she's living a life that pleases God, that, um, you know, and, and that she, she's living a life that, that honors him. And, um, and not only that, um, but it's interesting when, how many of you have ever heard that statement before, particularly if you're coming from a Catholic background, you have that whole idea, blessed are you among women. Blessed are you among women. And I believe it goes on to say, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, etc. And so there, there are these unique statements. And one thing to think about is that, is that her pleasure is not just a statement, I don't think, of the present reality of her life, but one that speaks of what has transpired already in her life, but also the idea of what is going to be going perhaps on in the future. Now, we don't view, if you would, uh, you know, 
the Mary in the same way as a, a traditional Catholic would or whatever, but there is something to be said about the person who lives with purity and the blessing that they know in their life as, as they live. And so here we have a lady who, who lives in purity and pleases God. She pleases God. It goes on to say, a, a little bit after that, verse, this is verse 30, the angel said to her, do not be afraid, you have found favor with God. Again, just going, out, what's that? She lives a life of purity, a life of righteousness. I wonder, you know, I think about myself, could it be said in, in some measure of me as I reflect on my life? Is there any, have I, could, could, could I find favor in God's eyes by the way I live, by the things I do? Do, does God have favor in the way I think, the things that I say? Does that, do, I, do I have favor with God in light of those things? Those are some interesting things to kind of rehearse and to go over. Am I living a, a, a faithful life again in order to find that favor? And uh, are there any areas that are kind of out of sync? Mary is living a life, if you would, that's in sync with God's desires for her. And it pleases her heavenly father so that he might use her in, a, in an amazing, amazing way. And, and, it's, and so it's, it's already true, this pleasing God, and it's true at that moment as the angel visits her. Um, and it's also true as he leaves her. If you look on a little bit later, chapter 147 and 48, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state, state of his maidservant, for behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. She, she's living this pure life that God can bless and God can, can, can find pleasure in and use, and people are going to reflect back on that throughout the centuries and say, wow. Think about that. When my life is what God wants it to be, I can be used in amazing ways. Amazing ways. And so God is pleased with her. And God is doing some amazing things and will do amazing things in her. And, it, and this really, this whole idea of favor, this idea of, of God being pleased, high, being, being um, favoring, if you would, is really a, a large issue. And, and Christmas isn't only about Mary, if you would, being um, favored. We see that he also favors Elizabeth and the faithful life that she lives and works in her life in incredible ways. And, and they experience uh, a presence that changes their present as God works through them. If you ask Jesus or the angels, um, you know, as, as they, they, uh, they work through this, uh, this Christmas story, um, if you ask them, you know, what, what is the blessing? What is the, the favor in all of this? You were, were brought back to that, what the angels uh, share. Good tidings of great joy, which is for all people. Great news, a savior has come. God has used these people in amazing ways. God has used them in amazing ways. One of the things that, uh, that kind of sticks out um, in uh, the Christmas story is the unique relationship here that God has with these individuals, particularly Mary. And, and we tend to think about God's care and God's relationship, God's love, if you would, for, for individuals. Um, you know, in, in, in today, uh, I just kind of I just get the sense that this is, we talk about God's love for people. You know, this morning we're talking about God's love for the Zaza people. We're talking about God's love for the world, and so we send missionaries uh, to those people. We, we know about God's love for people in our community. And we kind of, if you would, create this... Um, this, this amalgam of, uh, and put all of these things kind of together and, and we just kind of lump it. But one of the things that I think is beautiful about the Christmas story 
and, and, and I think maybe I ought to even change the thought for this morning as I think about it on the, just right on the spot here is that God does, does not only love us but God loves you and God loves me that he yes loves people and he loves the world and he loves but there's I don't want us to lose the individual aspect of his love and his care and his interaction with us that he really does love us and if you would that's why Christmas kind of has some weight it has some importance because it's not just about us it's about you and that babe came for you and for me it's it has it has a a a personal impact not just a a large uh group impact um purity god's pleasure mary pleased god but we also know and this leads to that individual nature of things that mary was a was a person um mary was a real person um, and, and we know that it's, it, she, it says she's troubled by the greeting of the angel. It, it kind of sets her off. It, 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 uh, you know, it, it kind of makes her uneasy what the angel says. It says, but when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying. Considered what manner of greeting this was, that then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there will be no end. Now that's pretty impressive. You know, what the, the, if you would, the, what, how we described it, the pedigree of this one that Mary is going to give birth to. Mary has got to be and will be a part of the, unf- the unfolding of the gospel in this an amazing way that because the one that she's going to give birth to is the one who is going to be the savior of the world. And so as she's confused, she's excited, I think she's, she's not quite sure how to understand this. She's, how in the world is this going to happen? And so she says, I'm a virgin. How is this going to be? She says, as it goes on, verse 34, how can this be? Since I don't know a man, I'm, gonna, I'm a virgin. Um, have you ever had a time in your life where God tells you he's going to do something I have no idea how in the world, how, how, wait, what? How can that be? How can that be? How's this going to, what are, all, all the moving parts just don't make sense. How's that going to happen? And here's Mary, and, and she's told that God is going to do something incredible in her life, and how's that going to be? I, I, I'm, I've never been with a man I, I've, never, I've never given birth to a Messiah before. I've never had children before. How's God going to do this? Mary, Mary is just a person, and she, she has these questions. How am I going to be a parent? I'm not even a wife. She's a person. She's pure. She pleases God. She's a part of what God's doing, but she is a person like you and me. And this question that she asks really is kind of just an issue of being perplexed at what God is doing. And so the angel responds to her question and he kind of gives her, you know, if you would, he, he gives her enough maybe to, to kind of calm her down, but he really doesn't answer the question. Do you catch that? He gives kind of a semi answer to Mary's question. He says this, the angel answered and said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore also that Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God. Does that really answer the question? I'd be like, what what does it mean? He's gonna come upon me. What what does that mean? And what does it mean overshadow? How, How is he gonna overshadow me? How's this gonna work? And it's, it's, it's perplexing. 
I would, I would, I, I would probably say, I need a little more information than that. I need a little more definition to your answer than that. Because I, it just doesn't completely cover what, what I'm asking here. And so the angel goes on to say, oh, um, here is where we want to be, 38. Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. What is Mary's response? Okay. I know me. I'd want to have a little bit more than I was given. I think the average person probably would want a little bit more than the angel gave. Now, albeit having an angel show up, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big tip off that something big's going to go on. Mary's perplexed, but she also is pure and willing to be used by God. And as a person, she does have these questions and she wonders about these things. And it kind of, she's confused, but, but she's a person of faith. And she decides, okay, okay. Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Wow. When's the last time you faced a huge situation and you said, God, I'm just happy to serve you. Just give it to me as you want. That's tough. That's tough. This year of this basically year of of COVID has been an opportunity for us to live in a perplexing world where our questions don't get answered and where we're called upon by faith to answer the situations with, let it be to me according to your word. I'm just gonna trust you, God. I, I, I don't have all the answers. I don't have all the definitions. I don't have all, the, all the, the, the jots and the tittles. I don't have all of the information that, that I would like to have, but I trust you. And so I'm just going to, I'm just gonna sit back and let you walk with me through this. That's really pretty interesting. It's one of perhaps the, you know, her life has changed forever. She has ongoing favor and blessing and she just walks with God. Um, that's amazing. And, and it's, it's, it's telling about her relationship with him. It's telling about how deeply she walks with him. And so let's look at our next. Mary's a picture. Mary is an example, if you would. We admire, we revere her because of her circumstance, because of her walk with God. Um, because she stuck, she stuck with him. She stuck with God and said, God, what, what you desire to do in my life, I'm open to that. Um, even though she was confused, didn't necessarily get all of what she might have wanted to know, what happens? She walks with God, and what do we see? She's in the upper room with the disciples. She continues to walk with him. We see that Mary's part of the book of Acts and the unfolding of the early church. We see that God worked in her ways, her, her life in many other ways. You know, Jesus was not Mary's only child. You realize that Jesus did have, if you would, brothers and sisters. Think about that. I hadn't really realized, if you would, the scope of, of Mary's family until I was looking at it. But Jesus had four brothers, James, Joseph, Judas, and the fourth was Simeon. He had four brothers. And we know he had two sisters, Matilda and Hillary. And that's not really their names. Sorry about that. <laughs> But he did have sisters. We don't know what their names were. And God continued to use this, this young woman. And she's an amazing picture of someone who walked faithfully, a great example for us. 
And so, so we have to understand, and I'd like for you to just walk away this morning with the idea that, that Jesus, the, the presence of Jesus with us and, and with them, it changes our present. And our awareness of his presence changes and should make a difference in our present. Do you realize that Jesus is with you as you come and you go each day, moment by moment? Wow, to think that, that, that Jesus walked with Mary and Mary walked with him that, as a family that for 30 years, it's, think, about, think about how pretty normal things were, at least as far as from what we understand, how normal things were for Jesus and his family until Jesus started ministry. Probably pretty normal. Came home after a day's work as a carpenter, dinner, enjoyed things with his families, with his brothers, sisters. And then all of a sudden, what? God leads him and it's time and he begins ministry. And that's when, that's when everything just kind of just explodes into reality. That God's desire to use her this one who was pure and, and pleased him, uh, all of a sudden bore fruit and began to change the world around them. God is with us. God was with Mary. She was faithful and found favor with him. She enjoyed his presence as he worked in her life and as Jesus, as she, she was Jesus' mother for, for all of those years. God was with her. God is with you, God is, is with me. And we enjoy his presence among us as a church. As we think about just him being present this morning, let me encourage you to think about how God will be present with you during the week and how that presence will change how you walk. Will you walk different? Will you respond different this week as you enjoy Jesus being with you? God with us, Emmanuel. Father, we thank you for this morning and Lord, the, the story of Mary is, is unique and there's, there's so much to it. And the Christmas story as a whole in scripture is a reminder for us of how you use individuals. And again, sometimes we tend to kind of group everything together into big, big, pic big picture, but Lord, I pray and I ask this morning that you might help us to make it individual Lord, as we consider Mary, Lord, help us, God, to, to live in a way that is pure. Help us, God, to please you in the things that we do. Help us, Lord, to reflect and to come to grips, God, uh, with the fact that, that Lord, um, uh, you are working with us as, as people, and, and we're flawed, and we have much to, to grow in. And that God, is, as you seek to unfold your purposes in us, help us to be willing to walk by faith. Lord, even when we don't have all of the answers. And Lord, I pray and I ask that you would help us to be examples, to be pictures for the people around us of those who recognize that God's presence changes our present. And that you being with us makes a difference in our lives. So, Lord, to make a difference, I would pray, in us this week and through this Christmas season. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing song this morning is actually Go Tell It on the Mountain. And one of the things that we can do as we go throughout the week is share that good news that Jesus is born, that Jesus is with us, that his presence changes our present with the people that we meet and those that we encounter. And so may this be our, our encouragement to you.
to, to, if you would, be a Mary, to be one who goes and lives out your faith, our faith, in a challenging and in a very compelling way. Worship team. Let's stand together as we sing. Go tell it on the mountain. Together, but also that uh, you will live out uh, just the reminders uh, with regard to God being with us, God being with you and walking with you. May his presence change your present each and every moment. It did for Mary, and may it be the same for you and for me. A lot going on this afternoon. Let me remind you of the concert at 4 o'clock. Invite you to join us for that. Let me also remind you of the opportunity to sign up for the Christmas lunch out in the Commons at the Welcome Center. And also, um, let me remind you of, uh, what else am I reminding you? Oh, Waterford Street School, if you uh, would like to help with that. And um, again, let me encourage you to RSVP for the Christmas Eve service. That is 5.30 December the 24th. All of that's in your program. Follow along with that and involve yourselves if you would. Our benediction this morning from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. A wonderful word that um, is shared with God's people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace this morning. Take care.